Welcome to the Writer at Work podcast. I'm your host, Kit Boyer. Your other host, Miss Catherine Mage, is not here today, uh, but you might hear in the background my kids who are apparently playing with construction equipment, according to the sounds that they're making. Today, we are going to be covering Second Attempt Crossing by Javier Zamora. Every week this month, I'm going to release a mini episode on a poem of the week. Obviously, Second Attempt Crossing is this week's poem. Uh, next week will be a poem about um, love by a, an ancient uh, Chinese court poet. Uh, we'll be going over that next Monday. So, the way that these are going to work is they're probably only going to be 10-15 minutes long. I'm going to read the poem, which is publicly available, with a link down below. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the context of the poem, and then get into what we can learn from it. Second Attempt Crossing by Javier Zamora for Chino. In the middle of that desert that didn't look like sand and sand only, in the middle of those acacias, whiptails, and coyotes, someone yelled, La Migra! and everyone ran. In that dry creek where forty of us slept, we turned to each other, and you flew from my side in the dirt. Black-throated sparrows and dawn hitting the tops of mesquites beautifully. Against the herd of legs, you sprinted back toward me. I jumped on your shoulders, and we ran from the white trucks. It was then the gun ready to press its index. I said, freeze, Chino, para por favor. So I wouldn't touch their legs that kicked you, you pushed me under your chest, and I've never thanked you. Beautiful Chino, the only name I know to call you by. Farewell, your tattooed chest. The M, the S, the 13. Farewell, the phone number you gave me when you went east to Virginia and I went west to San Francisco. You called twice a month. Then your cousin said the gang you ran from, in San Salvador, found you in Alexandria. Farewell, your brown arms that shielded me then, that shield me now, from La Migra. So this poem was published in 2016, and some notes about the poet Javier Zamora. He was born in El Salvador, and he immigrated to the U.S. at nine. His parents were in California already, so he came here to join them. He's obviously a very skilled poet. He started really loving poetry only in high school, when a visiting poet read some poems by Pablo Neruda to his class. Zamora said in an interview in 2014, Poetry matters because there's a history of all the poets who have risked their lives to write. I think in the United States we forget that writing and carrying that banner of being a poet is tied into a long history of people that have literally risked their lives and died to write these words. And uh, Zamora has a few poems publicly available to read on PoetryFoundation.com if you liked this one. He also has been published in some very prestigious journals like Plowshares, Poetry Magazine, and Kenyan Review. Um, and of course, a great poet like this, he's got a slew of honors. I'm not even gonna get, a, gonna get into all of them, it would be a whole episode. Um, so what, what does this poem mean? I don't think that it's a hidden meaning. <laughs> The desert that didn't look like sand and sand only is the southwest des desert. I don't know if he crossed in Arizona, but it really reminds me of Arizona, which is where I live. The mesquites and the beautiful dawns and everything uh, is really a gorgeous image, and it's this horrible thing that's happening in this gorgeous image. Uh, this the, the desert that didn't look like sand and sand only is the desert of the southwest because it doesn't look like what you necessarily expect from a desert. It's a lot of rocks and dirt and scrub. It's not so much sand like you would expect like in Egypt or something. It's not a bunch of sand dunes or something like that. It's, it's very much just dirt. What can we learn from the line breaks and the way that it, that it hits you when you look at it on the page? Uh, well, first, first of all, the three lines that include the word Chino, this person's um, nickname, are by themselves. For Chino, I said freeze Chino para por favor and beautiful Chino. Those are the three lines that are by themselves in the poem. Everything else is back to back with other lines. The stanzas are longer. We can learn a little bit from the line breaks in this because they kind of feel like stepping, like you're running. Uh, because the first line is flush with the left margin and then the next line is tabbed in one. And then the line is flush and then tabbed, flush and tabbed. Um, 
you can also see that the stanzas are separated into ideas and images. So the first one is them sleeping in a creek bed, talking about how it looks, and then La Migra comes, and they're all running. And Chino gets kind of like uh, kicked away, or he has to leave for a moment, maybe to go see what's happening. And then the dawn is coming up, and a herd of legs, which makes it seem like a stampede. But it's probably this little kid is laying down. You know, he's nine when this happened. This is autobiographical. And then Chino comes back, and he jumps on Chino's shoulders, and they run from the white trucks, which is, uh, oh, La Mira is immigration, the immigration authorities. So they're coming to kick these people out or to incarcerate them for an unknown period of time. Luckily, Zamora has family in the U.S., and he's a minor. So he gets to come in, and presumably Chino is also a minor because he's MS-13, which means that he probably isn't very old. <laughs> Sounds like I'm not the only one who's sad about this poem. Um, it's a very emotional, very emotional piece. Uh, Chino pushes, instead of shooting, which is what it sounds like he was going to do, he has a gun, um, Javier says, freeze Chino, and Chino instead pushes uh, the young Zamora under him to block him from getting kicked. Um, and the idea, he pauses for a moment and says, and I've never thanked you. That's such a such an interesting idea that he never thanked Chino for saving him and for shielding him from La Migra immigration. Um, because he was a child, so of course he didn't think to thank him. It's just something that happened in his life, you know? But now that he's an adult, he's writing this poem as a way of saying thank you. This is his thank you. Uh, all right, so form and line breaks. You can reflect your the, the meaning of your poem or the beat of your poem in your line breaks. And it's going to take time for you to develop a good intuition for where to end a line or to put a comma or a stanza break. And all of that is just practice, reading other people's work, thinking about why they might put a line break in a certain place, and then applying that to your own poetry. It's something that you're going to learn over time. Now, there are some, <laughs> there are some, some poems that look visually like an object um, or like an abstract art kind of thing, where the words will be in different places around the page, or they'll be shaped in a certain way. Like the poem is about um, it being boys' night, and they, you know, shaped the poem like a margarita glass or something, you know? While that is a little cute, I guess, cutesy, uh, I would not recommend it for every poem. You really have to think about your tone and what you are trying to get from this piece. Are you trying to tell somebody like a cutesy kind of story, like, and then we went and we got drunk, 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 you know, something silly. Or are you telling them something very serious? Like, you know, it's boys night. You guys got pretty drunk. You accidentally killed one of your friends and you dumped his body in the lake. That's probably not going to be the best poem to put in the shape of a margarita glass. <laughs> um, you're probably going to want to write it into a different shape visually. But your poems can reflect visually the feel of the piece. So that is a tool you can use. The final thing I think we can learn from this poem is that we do need to write things that are important about the world. For us, for others, everybody has unique experiences, and we here in this developed and peaceful, at peace in our own country anyway, nation, um, I think we are somewhat privileged in being able to write about how boring traffic was today or you know, what it's like to live to be very, very old or something. Um, whereas in other places, that is not necessarily something they they get to write about. They have to write about what's happening around them, which might be war, might be abuse or violence or gang violence. It might be, you know, all kinds of awful things. And uh, Zamora is right. We, we do need to keep close to our bones the idea that the heritage of poetry is the history of people in flux. So when we write our pithy poetry, we should not be too worried about whether or not it's going to make something important for the rest of the world, but we should also elevate poetry that does do that. I think that's pretty much all I have for this poem. It's a really beautiful poem. He's a, such a good poet. Uh, I would recommend that everybody read some of his work. Uh, he's got Guadalajara, 
which is about him staying in Mexico, waiting to come into America. And in it, he he talks about the people around him as objects. One person is called Closet, and it's calling him and the other people who are coming, who are immigrating to America, disgusting, you know, crappy pigeons. And they only eat tomatillos and stuff. It's very interesting. It's really interesting that he does that. Again, I think that's all I've got. If you would like to tune in next week for our next poem, that would be wonderful. Um, If you have any questions or if you have a different interpretation or anything to add about the meaning of this poem or what we can learn from it, please hit us up on social media. We're on Instagram and Twitter um, at Writer at Work Pod. We're on Patreon. You can support us there. We're on YouTube. We are on every podcasting website or platform. Uh, You can find us pretty much everywhere. We also have Discord and Twitch. If you are interested in writing, but you don't want to write alone, we are going to do every, I think every Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that is 2 p.m. Arizona time, for those of you wondering. Uh, We're going to do a live stream Twitch word sprint where Catherine and I are live on screen and you guys can interact with us in the chat. Uh, and we will just do 10 minutes of writing as fast as we can, as much as we can. And then we'll take a three minute break and talk about how we did and how many words we got. And then we'll do another 10 minutes of writing. And we do that for about an hour, maybe two hours, depending on how we all feel. This past weekend, I was able to write over a thousand words, which was great because that's more than I wrote last month. So, (laughs) Uh, all right. I think that's it for me. Um... Stay safe out there and good luck.